Hello, my name is Gil Popilski. I'm from Israel. I'm a sophomore majoring, majoring in computer science and I'm a grandmaster. So this game was played actually three years ago, but since uh, that's probably my nicest game ever, I'm showing it anyway. Uh, it was played in Basel where I screwed up the last round and we shared the, the second prize, but because there was no tie break, I just lost a lot of money. I guess I wasn't the richest then. I'm the black, black player, yeah. So back then I used to play the Neidorf. Uh, yeah, my opponent was playing it quite often, so I thought I'll get a chance to play my novelty here. Yeah, so here there are many moves, for example, knight bd7 with the uh, ideas of rook c8 and later sack the exchange. Typical idea in the Sicilian, or there's this move, which I think is the main move here. I don't know. And there's this move, knight c6, which I think Dennis actually played once, but I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah, my opponent looked very nervous here. I think he was suspecting I have something because he thought for a long time, although it's the main move. And now there's this move, d5, that... Uh, well, that's a move, but normally it just goes to this end game. Well, white is slightly better because of a pair of bishops. But I had this idea here. And now it looks a little bit silly because the knight on b4 is uh, not very well placed. After a3 it will be kicked out. But I had a concrete idea here. Yeah, so white, uh, white can play a3 here actually to kick the knight out, but then I have this idea, check here. And now the this pawn is pinned, so white cannot take the bishop. And here I have a fairly decent position with ideas of sacrificing the exchange. This is why white prepared for a stronger version of a3 by moving the king, and now I will not have this idea anymore because the pawn, the pawn is not pinned. This move is actually the strongest in this position, I think. And no, maybe after king b1. Yeah, so now I played queen c7. And this move is very good here because white plays this idea, which is typical in this opening line. And now kicking the knight out is a lot stronger than in the game. We'll see soon why. And now white is slightly better in this position. It's opposite colored bishops and uh, d5 is weakened. But uh, all, the, all this is, is quite hard to figure out over the board, so we played a3, and now this was my idea. This silent move here, I actually found it first. It, it was played according to the database first by Wojtacek, but he was in the tournament and he saw me play it, so he stole the credit. And now the idea is that I'm threatening e4, because the knight is pinned, and I also want to play queen a4 and get this knight. Again, because the knight is pinned, and the king cannot move out of the pin, which is what he did, so he can do it, but I get the knight back. So there are a few moves here. I think, I used to think this is the main one, and it's quite complicated here, but uh, I have pretty strong compensation. These are forced lines, and I have a pretty strong compensation here, because I have the pair of bishops, and the knights are tied up somewhat. I was willing to play it, I was hoping for it. And there's this move also. And again, pair of bishops, attack, compensation. There's also this move, which leads by force to descending. I used to think that this is the most challenging idea for white. I thought it's, uh, at first, when I analyzed this position, I looked at f6, and I thought white has very strong compensation here. But later I came up with this defense, and I thought it's close to equality. So in the game, after thinking for a long time, he went for king b1. I didn't really analyze it, I was quite surprised. And uh, now I'm up a pawn. But he's well developed and uh, I have to escape with the queen because he wants to play 
maybe knight d5 here, so it's quite risky. Again, there are many moves here, but it's quite hard to decide over the board. I think I spent here maybe half an hour. It's a bit pointless to look at all these lines now, but it's just... I thought about this move, for, for instance, to go for this typical idea, counter-attack, and... Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what's going on here, who's better. It looks very good for black at first, but it's not so easy. So I went for this move. I thought 20 minutes here, turns out. Yeah, and I spent quite a bit of time on this position. but it's probably just good for, for black. So he continues the same spirit, just playing quiet moves, but uh, slowly improving. And while I'm up a pawn, it's a little bit hard to improve my position here. I, I think I thought about this move for a long time, to sacrifice the queen, but it looks somewhat solid, but I don't know. I think only white can play for, for a win here. I think it was two hours per game in this tournament and no increment, so I had a lot of time to think. Yeah, so we had this move here. And it, or it, it turns out that I have this fork on the rooks and it's quite hard to see because this looks more natural, but I cannot take here now because there's a check here. Well, if I took with the pawn, the bishop is here and I can simply take the rook back. So he avoided it, he played g5, just again, silent moves. And it's a very weird position here. I don't really know how to evaluate it. I didn't know during the game. Now white simply wants to play knight before at some point and fork. Hard to move here. So I had to move the queen because otherwise the bishop is pinned. For example here. Now there's a nice tactic. If he plays knight before with the idea to take the pair of bishops or make bishop d3 stronger because the bishop is protected. And the idea is that here, if I take on c1, then white has fairly good compensation here. Yeah, so the idea is that I can take here instead and force a draw. So instead, he went for this, he wanted to fight. He's quite an aggressive player in general, so I wasn't surprised. Although I think I had much more time here still, maybe half an hour against 15, so I thought maybe he will chicken, but he didn't. I could have played this move because I'm still not going to lose the, the bishop, but yeah, I have this idea here. And I'm just in time to protect everything. But still, I think white has a good composition of all, something like queen g4 maybe, and then rook c1. It's hard to castle. Yeah, it does look risky. I agree with myself. <laughs> this is why I decided to sack, sack the exchange here, because I think the bishop is worth more than a rook in this position. If I, can, if I take with the bishop, then there is another pin. And it's just very hard to move. Yeah. 
Now I play this move because he doesn't want to let me castle. If I castle, I basically solve all my, all my problems because the king is safe and the rook is ready to join the play. So something like this looks quite good for black. I just have two pawns. The d pawn can become very dangerous for the exchange. The king side pawns are weak. So he gave me a check. Now if he goes back with the idea to get an improved version of this because I cannot castle, I will go here instead. And if white goes for a draw, it's not actually a draw because the rook is under fire. So he came back here. And yeah, there's a strong threat. Here. For example, if I play some move like rook f8 to prepare bishop c7, white has this move. And if I take on, these, on e3, there's a fork. While I cannot go back with the queen because this bishop is weak. So I played this move. Yeah, I actually saw this position in advance, but of course I couldn't evaluate it. I just went for it. It looks good because the bishop is very active and the rook is stuck here. So now I play this move, of course, just to prepare bishop c7. Here there was some crazy computer line, which of course I did not see. And it's a <laughs> something similar to checkmate. I don't think it's a draw. <laughs> I have to play knight c5. And it doesn't look nice. So it looks like I have to play this move. And <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Draw probably. Yeah. Draw. Crystal clear. So of course I saw everything. So I took here instead because I didn't want to draw. <laughs> <laughs> now I was begging for a draw probably. Actually, I felt that he's, he's very nervous here. So I thought as uh, time travel approaches, I have a good chance to outplay him. Here I just want to exchange queens because then this pawn will gain in strength and the somewhat dubious placement of the king will become useful. For some reason queen h4 was better. I don't know, it, it still looks somewhat irrational this position but White's problem here is that now I, I, I can trap the rook. Well, if the queen was on h4, I couldn't have played it because I guess it just takes here. Yeah, then king e7. But here, I don't know if I lose this pawn also, it's really looking suspicious. But of course, it's not an easy move to play because the queen looks a little bit offside. Maybe just go for a draw here, I don't know. He also, oh actually he's threatening h7 anyway. Yeah, which is why I played this ugly move. Okay, I think he's begin, uh, he's experience, experiencing some sort of an amok here. I don't know, h4 just looks totally senseless. Now the, <coughs> the rook is trapped and I simply want to play the king here and force white to sacrifice in exchange. Yeah, the same idea. Now he's already preparing to sacrifice here. I guess he didn't see anything better. He still had this idea and if I play king d8, he can go for this, but I think black is better here. Play this move.
this ending, probably it will be a draw somehow, but it didn't look like I should trust it. Anyway, I think my decision was more practical. Since we were still before move 40, I thought I should keep the queens. Now f4 was strong. Since white has the bishop and I have the knight, it's of course a good idea to open up the position. Then we get some diagonals. Instead, I played this move, which is even uglier than rook h8, I think. And now, since he's protecting b2, he is ready to take on h7 with the queen, which is why I played g6. Yeah, now it was a hard decision on, on move 39. I didn't have much time, but if I will let white take on e5, it means the f line is open and the d4 square might be available for the bishop if I take with the knight. And if I take with the pawn, this diagonal is open. So I played e4, at least to keep uh, the f and e line lines closed. It's the same uh, method as before, because he cannot take with the queen, because v2 is dead. I think I, well, move 40 pass, so I got my half an hour, I think, and now I'm just better ready to play rook c2. This is why white had to play this move and keep the line closed. And now there's a real threat to take on d5, so maybe I should take here. If white takes with the queen, then of course I just grab the rook. So, yeah. It looked very, very strong for black during the game, but retrospectively, it's quite hard to tell. Maybe I have this move here also. But it looked. There? Yeah. No, but then I have. Uh, Ah, rook d3. Queen a3 I can play, but it's going to be a draw. So I guess take here, king b1. Queen b4 and knight c3. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, maybe king a1 here, but it's probably... I think black is better anyway. But he just lost his head completely and played this move. I think he wanted to avoid king f8, but the problem was that he's just paralyzed here. Now he plays it. I already have this threat, so... I guess he wanted to have bishop b4. No, maybe he wanted to, but he didn't play it. Anyway, I'm just a pawn up played this move. Now he wants maybe bishop b4. Now I'm simply threatening knight f2 actually. And probably some sacrifices here will do it also. It looks dangerous because there are all these things in the air but the queen is watching over all the important squares. So that's probably his most obvious attempt. He wants to take here and open the h file. Try to give some checks. But he simply had to resign here because I'm threatening queen a2. And there's just no way to stop it. And here it's checkmate. So after knight c1, he resigned.